Hello and welcome to the Law of Distraction podcast. Today I'm joined by Doreen Virtue. Hi Heather, it's so great to be with you. This podcast is all about unveiling spiritual truths in a distracted world. And today I'm talking to Doreen about the experience of coming out of new age practices like manifestation, law of attraction, and what Doreen is mostly known for, tarot cards, angel guides. She has a lot of knowledge on that subject and now a lot of experience coming out of that world and living a different life. There's a lot of doctrine and theology we might have to navigate as new believers. So I've put together some questions to help people understand the very real life, heart and mind changing spiritual experiences of coming out of new age and coming to God. So Doreen, what's it like for you now reading the Bible? Yeah, um, well, I grew up with the Bible. My mom gave me my own personal King James Version Bible when I was maybe 10, nine or 10 years old. And we were assigned readings at the Christian Science Church that we went to. And it was very much uh, eisegesis, which means twisting scripture. We'd be getting one verse from one book, another verse from another book, and then it would be paired with a commentary from uh, Mary Baker Eddy's Christian Science books. And so I didn't understand the Bible at all. I think, and I just want to say this, I respect for people who understand the KJV. It's a definitely a respected formal translation based upon the, at that time, oldest manuscript of the Bible in 1611. But I didn't understand it growing up. And I I think today that that added to my deception because I didn't know the these and the thous and the yees uh, at all. <laughs> and, language. and I didn't know about different translations either. So, and, you know, and as you said, the God of this world blinds us before we're saved. I would try to read the whole Bible. It was always my goal to read the whole Bible, but I would get to the story of Lot and his daughters, and I just didn't have the context with how to deal with that. So I would just put it away. And when I was it was actually before I was saved that um, my son Grant sent me the one year Bible, which is this Bible that helps you to go through the whole Bible in one year. Every day you read a passage from the Old Testament, the New Testament, a Psalm and a proverb. And so that helped me to organize and just to keep going. I didn't really understand all of it, but I got a sense of God's character through that because growing up in Christian science and then getting into the new age, I believed that God was the universe or an energy, an impersonal force. So how could I trust, love, or know an energy? And that's why I got into angels, because they seemed accessible and personal. Yes, of course, because a part of your testimony is that you started reading the Bible before... Before I was saved, yeah. When I got to Deuteronomy 18, especially verses 10 through 12, which Deuteronomy is Moses talking to the Israelites before they crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land and telling them what the Ten Commandments are about. Leviticus is about the, the ceremonial laws. You know, people often say, well, what about the shellfish and the mixing of the two types of fabric? That's ceremonial laws that we're not under today. But the the moral laws of the Ten Commandments were still under today. Deuteronomy expands on the Ten Commandments and explains them. And Deuteronomy 18 in particular expands on the first two commandments to only worship God and to not have any idols. God, through Moses, is telling the Israelites, do not be like the pagans in Canaan. He starts off by saying, don't burn your sons or daughters in the fire, which, of course, none of us would think about doing that today. Uh, But he goes on and he says that similar to burning children is divination. He calls it in some translations, fortune telling, interpreting omens and signs and mediumship. And those were the three things I was doing in the new age and teaching tragically. I was passing the deception along because I didn't know. And when I got to that, Heather, I just, I was broken because you you probably can relate to this. Uh, Most new age healers, and psychics believe they are helping people. Yeah. I really, I had this deception. I thought I was helping God with my new age work because I was, it seemed, the feedback I would get was I was helping people to be less afraid and to be comforted in their losses. And so I just thought I was doing God's work until I read Deuteronomy 18. And it just, my whole world was shattered, just burst into tears. And I was on my knees and I just said to God, I didn't know. I'm so, so, so sorry. It just leaps off the page, isn't it? I think yeah. that scripture about 
the word of God just gets into our bones, like it can cut through bones. That blew my mind because it really does. Even if you've read it over and over, and you see it and you see it spiritually, I think those are the moments where you're just so convicted. I love that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, um, who is really the author of the Bible, the uh, yeah. Holy Spirit wrote the Bible through 40 some odd men, maybe, maybe women. We don't know who the author of Hebrews is. Could be Priscilla. And so the Holy Spirit, the author, kind of chooses when he will turn the lights on and help us to see and understand Scripture. And when you do, like you said, it just leaps off the page and convicts you. You know, before then, if anyone told me I was a sinner, I thought they were singling me out and pointing fingers at me and calling me a bad person, which I would deflect partly because the new age belief is you guard against negativity. That's the, that's the devil to a new ager is anything negative. So the, the talk about sin, hell, repentance, you're just being fear-based. You're just being negative. Yes. Back then it seemed to my deceived mind so strange. Why would anyone focus on this thing from the past, this old religious Jesus tradition, rather than benefit from all the knowledge, the idea of an ever-expanding universe that we were creating through our mind energy. I think this points to an underlying belief for, for many in the New Age, that the more and more we move through time and into the future, that we're getting closer to truth, when of course the reverse is true. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, there was this truth, and we are moving further away from it. So prideful to think we know better when we haven't evolved since. I mean, I just love reading about the first century. Absolutely yeah. love reading about that. But also see yeah. how we just haven't changed. We really haven't changed. And that's we haven't. <laughs> Every one of the characters in the Bible is us today. Yes, absolutely. So reading it now compared to then, how much yeah. easier is it with having the Holy Spirit? Oh, completely. <laughs> Um, yeah, now I just drink it in. Yeah. And I have this motto, a lot of people do, called Word Before World, where yeah. I'll read the Bible before getting engaged with the world. And it yeah. really makes a big difference. I have not missed a day of reading the Bible first thing in the morning since I've been saved. And I can't even imagine skipping Bible reading. And, and I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that to suggest to others, if you're having bad days, turn to the Bible. I hear Ray Comfort was says Bible before breakfast. And because yeah. I have that in my head, every time I wake up, it's like, you yeah, know, Bible before breakfast. That's a good <laughs> like, one. It is. I haven't heard him say it is, that. It That's really a really good me. I'm like, Ray. So I hear Ray in my head <laughs> every day. I love Ray. <laughs> and I do. In the new age, there's this whole idea of getting up early, the power hour. And for me, that would look like meditation and yoga and affirmations and visualization. What was your power hour before like you say now it, it's spending time with God but did you have that first thing in the morning I've got to have a routine I've got to have a spiritual practice what did that look like yeah unfortunately I was reading what's called the new age bible a course okay. in miracles for probably 20 years I read the urtext version which was the original version of the course in miracles that was my bible it's a bible for a lot of new agers again because I came from christian science which is basically gnosticism and the woman who channeled a course in miracles Hel helen shookman had a, a christian science background louise hay was raised by a christian science parent and so a lot of us came from that background of believing in, like Gnostics, that matter is an illusion. Therefore, how could Jesus have died on the cross? And that there's no such thing as hell. It's a metaphor or a fear-based threat from the Roman Catholic Church to control us. I believed that the Bible had been tampered with, that there was missing books. All of those lies that Satan tells us because Satan doesn't want us to read the Bible. That would set your day up and you'd think, I'm on the yeah. right, I'm on the right road now. Yeah, because it's interesting. Helen Shookman um, was deceived. She she channeled this Course in Miracles, and it was a, it was bigger than the Bible in terms of number yeah. of pages. And it was, she channeled it in the '60s as and and she was she believed it was coming from Jesus, yeah. that Jesus was explaining to her what he really meant in the Bible. So I was always seeking that truth. 
just like Eve was tempted by the serpent in Genesis 3 with hidden wisdom, I fell for that. The Course in Miracles teaches the opposite of the Bible. It teaches there's no such thing as a devil except for your ego and your negative thinking. It teaches that there's no such thing as the crucifixion, no such thing as sin, and that the only problem in this world is that we haven't forgiven each other. And see, that's what the devil does oh. is he, he mixes in truth with lies. Yes. Because forgiveness is biblical. Jesus himself said we had to forgive. He emphasized that. And so that hooked me in because I believed that you have to forgive. So I thought, therefore, the rest of the Course in Miracles must be valid. Yes, it's all very clever, isn't it? The deception. If it was obvious, then we wouldn't give it the time of day. I was sharing with a friend recently who calls herself a psychic about the Lord's Prayer, how Jesus leads us shows us how to pray for forgiveness as we have been forgiven and then speaks about it again in Matthew's gospel about going to one another and resolving what needs to be resolved fully forgiving before making that offering or coming to God when I told her that the Lord's prayer was Jesus's words like him teaching the disciples and then therefore us today she was like no wonder it caught on I imagine by the time the day of the Lord is here, every single possible way in which the Bible could be twisted, abused, every single word be taken out of context, and numerous times. And the law of attraction and this new thought, energy, healing world is going a long way to make that a reality. I mean, talk about creating your own reality. Yeah. Forgiveness is really a root subject for a lot of these new thought, new age ideas and practices, from cord cutting ceremonies, healing trauma circles and ancestral stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, right. it's always a daddy issue there somewhere along the line. You know, to be, to be healed from, because this is the fake version, the anti-Christ version of forgiveness of sin. And that has a knock-on effect to ideas of life after death, um, yeah, yeah. A lot of reincarnation beliefs that, um, so why would you need to repent and be saved in this life? Because you have a million chances with other lives to come back. Right. And then I've, I was very focused on reports of near-death experiences mm -hmm. that told me that everyone goes to heaven and that God is love and didn't even mention God's nature as just and holy and wrathful. We conveniently left those out because the, the new age is run by Satan who wants as many souls as possible to follow him to hell. Yeah. To go back to that forgiveness, what I've noticed is I'm truly forgiving. Like I'm able to forgive because I know how Jesus has forgiven me. And I really feel that. And yeah, absolutely. Reflecting on when I did those new age ceremonies in the past, it never felt then as fully cleansed or completed as it does to me now when I seek God, when I ask him to help me forgive others or ask for his forgiveness and things that I've done. Things may have worked through in the past, I may have worked things through and come to a resolve, but God's way is a completely other level. I'd love to hear your experience of listening to guides versus listening to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Like you said, in the, in the New Age, it was very works-based. Uh, you had to do things constantly to be cleansed. Uh, I called it detoxing. I was always detoxing from negativity, from negative energy. It was just obsession. And, you know, I'd be doing this all the time <laughs> with my yeah, hands. Yeah. Insane, right? I'm sure I look like the crazy ant to a lot of people. <laughs> and... And just, I had crystals, I would use sage, I would use geometrical shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would look at the configuration of the stars and the moon. And just, I was so phobic when I look back, Heather. I don't know if yeah. you relate to that, but I was, I was always afraid of being fearful, but I was fearful. I was very much into conspiracy theories back then. I think some of them are actually true, <laughs> but I was obsessed that there's this, you know, and this maybe is going to come true, that China was going to take over our country and just I, we were going to be invaded and taken out of our home. So I was always stockpiling things. I made our, my husband pay for two gigantic water tanks 
so that we wouldn't run out of water. You know, I mean, we were preppers to the max because I was convinced that China was going to take us over. Yeah. And, uh, and now, you know, maybe they are, but I just don't have that fear anymore. I think it's good to be prepared. I think it's good to be, to research and vote for, to vote biblically with a biblical worldview. Yes. I, I've been, I've been pro-life since I was 18. I never really admitted that publicly when I was a new ager because it was, I knew it was unpopular, but I've, I've always voted pro-life. That's been my number one issue. So I'm more conservative now because of the biblical worldview, but some things like that haven't changed. I just, I feel more at peace, even though we can all see the world just going absolutely insane. Um, when you have Jesus as your rock foundation, you know that this world is not your, your whole existence. You know that we're being prepared for the next world. It's a bizarre way to live, isn't it, now? Because yeah. that whole convicting passage of don't store up treasures on earth, but store them up in heaven. You need to be storing up your water tanks in heaven. Yes. <laughs> You're doing the opposite. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a weird way to live thinking that this is my temporary home, yet mm -hmm. I have a purpose here. Yeah. So what was your purpose before that's such a great question. Yeah, a lot of people in the New Age have this belief that um, they're, they're fixated on life purpose. And um, my life purpose, I thought, was to train healers, to train psychics. I called myself a teacher of teachers. So I would train up a lot of people who are unfortunately teaching New Age deception now. And I've repented for that. And I continue to renounce the new age. Other people are selling my old stuff, which just is just heartbreaking and maddening because I don't know. I wrote books like 60 to 70 books in 38 languages for over 20 years. And I wish there was a way for me to recall them. I just, there, other people are selling them. The only good news is that people are now writing me saying they can't find some of my products because they've gone out of print. So I really do you believe can write that. You write back saying... I do. I share the gospel. <laughs> yeah. I, sh I, I use every opportunity to share the gospel. Yeah. Um, and so that's been helpful to really, you know, talk to people in the new age and, and they write me and they, at first they're yelling at me, how come you sold tarot cards and now you're saying to burn them? And I kind of ignore that they're angry. I realize they're afraid yeah. and just talk with them on Instagram direct about the truth that they're seeking is not in the cards. It's in the Bible. It's in following Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And not, yeah, do not lean and on our own understanding. That was another question I had. How much negative feedback was there when you were teaching New Age spirituality compared to your life now in Christ? Well, uh, I still get negative feedback. You know, people yeah. make up stories about me. And um, were you getting that as a writer? Is it because I thought you'd when I, absolutely be praised? Well, when I was a new ager, I got yeah. criticism. You know, okay. some, yeah. So some new agers said I was too fluffy. They wanted me to be more in the dark occult, and I they called me like Disney. Wow, there's just no pleasing some people. <laughs> <laughs> there was New Agers who couldn't stand me when I was a New Age teacher. And also, of course, Christians were constantly posting on my Facebook page, scripture out of context. Mm. You know, that's not how you witness to a New Ager if someone's watching this. It doesn't make any sense to a spiritually blind person. You yeah. need to sit down with them and have a patient talk about who Jesus is, who he was in his earthly ministry, and share the gospel with them. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. Amen. And I was getting that because I thought I was a Christian since I was a kid. So the weird thing when I look back, Heather, is I would listen to, I would go to talks from Hindu gurus. I would go to Buddhist temples and I would bow down to a Buddhist statue. And I would also listen to Christian radio. I was, I thought you could blend everything because yeah. I was what's called a pluralist, meaning yeah. I believed all religions led to God, all paths led to God, like Oprah teaches. And so I would listen to Christian radio, solid teachers like Alistair Begg, and, and it would just kind of, the gospel would just wash over me and, and wouldn't pierce me because I didn't believe I was a sinner. Until you know that you have sinned, why would you need a savior? Absolutely. And I think, think you're right in, when witnessing to other New Agers. It's about actually finding out what their beliefs are first. It's sort of asking those questions. Well, what do you think about God? What, rather than coming in and like with, 
you're going to hell. It's like, no, I can't. No. I don't, it's not going to work. <laughs> no, because New Agers don't even believe in hell. They'll think you're fear-based. And, and, and they believe they have the answer as well. Oh, yeah. They'll, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll watch the New Agers will start witnessing back to the Christian yeah. and, and try and turn them into a New Ager. My, look, um, it's not up to us to save people. I used to think I was here to save the world. I had this very grandiose delusion that it was up to me to save. Jesus is our savior. Jesus saves people. What we're here to do is share the gospel, plant the seeds, and then it's up to God. My own mother is a perfect example. She lives with us, and she's a full-blown New Ager. She's even got New Age materials in our house, which I, every time I ask her, can I get rid of it? She says no. And so my brother who's saved and myself, we've shared the gospel with my mom, and we continue to. We've planted the seeds, and we pray for her day and night, but she is still clinging to her beliefs that Jesus is just a man and not God, who he really is. I had a conversation with a brother in Christ who said he had come to this realization he had a messiah complex, like wanting to save everyone. And although that's a beautiful mission, we know it can never come from us. And if it does, it's self-serving in some ways. It is not the same picture of the young Samuel hearing God and saying, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, praying that prayer. Um, and I've witnessed it in my own walk. God will bring people to you who are ready to hear the good news and just give you the words. He opens up opportunities to plant seeds. You know, his ways are not our ways. And I found it that it's usually more surprising and subtle and unexpected. And that's when I know it's not me. It's all him. Yeah, I used to see those people with the the you know the billboard bill yeah. things over the, I used to see them when I would come out of New Age events and they'd have you know big old signs that we're all wow. going to hell and it didn't connect the dots at all for me yeah you know uh, New Agers believe in God but they believe in God in a different way and they believe God like I said is an energy but they believe God's the energy of love so anything that seems to be fear based they'll reject as a false belief absolutely. So how about the changes you've seen in yourself? It's kind of getting personal. Um, but how you see yourself, how you saw yourself, like the differences yeah. then to now. Yeah. Did, did we ever meet in the new age, Heather? No. Okay. Um, I, was, I was just a horrible diva, a wretched diva when I was in the new age because I was on stage almost every weekend in front of thousands of people spending thousands of dollars on designer gowns and being escorted in limos by just this entourage of people. Um, I would get standing ovations everywhere. People would wait in line for hours for my signature. It went to my head. And I, I apologize if that affected anyone watching this. I was just an obnoxious diva. After I was saved, I, I really just wanted to get out of the public eye. I, I would love to be a private person. You know, I've I've worked since I was a kid and, and I only work now because my products are still out there. If my products were gone tomorrow, I probably would stop working tomorrow. I yeah. would still share the gospel, you know, but I work hard in the public eye right now because my stuff's still out there and I don't know how to get it out because uh, my U.S. publisher sold licenses for seven years for the products worldwide and they say they can't break that contract. So it's being published in other languages. And uh, the U.S. publisher apparently sold all my remaining stock to Penguin Books, who are selling them on Amazon. And then there's this horrible publisher printer in China who's reprinting my cards new on demand without a booklet. So the only good thing about that is people write me and say, can I buy a booklet from you for these cards? And that shows me that they have just bought these new cards from this China printer. And I, like I said, I get to share the gospel with them. But it's, it's, it's a consequence of sin. I was an absolute enemy of God. I didn't know it. I sinned so bad that if I had died in the new age, I would be in hell for eternity. It's only by God's grace I'm alive. Um, so I'm, I'm dealing with painful consequences of sin with my family, who are, except for my brother and myself, um, are New Agers. They think that my brother and I are judgmental bigots. Um, we've been shunned by people, including uh, one of my own children will not talk to me. I'm completely shut out of my grandson's life. I'm 
heartbroken over that, but I understand because I'm sure they see me as a negative person. And in, in new age, you'd cut cords with negative people. If I stopped sharing the gospel, if I stopped denouncing the new age, I could probably get back in the good graces of my family and some of my old friends, but I can't. Jesus commands yeah. us to, to go and share the gospel, to make disciples of all nations. And so I have to put Jesus before family and friends and people who don't understand. Um, Galatians 1.10 says, are you a God pleaser or a people pleaser? I deal with hatred coming my way every single day, people making up horrible stories about me instead of coming to me directly to ask. When I've said all along, you can talk to me on Instagram direct. I do my best to answer every letter, even though I get behind because it's just me. It's been awful, Heather. Being a Christian is not for wimps. But at the same time, I know I finally found the truth I was looking for my whole life. It's in the Bible. Oh, I've got a yeah. peace that I was always looking for. Amen. And he gives us that strength. And even when you just, yeah. like today, I was just saying before we started recording, I'm like literally crawling. In the past, I would have gone, what's wrong with my energy? What's wrong with that? But he will just prop me up. I just yeah. know it. And you get reminded, this is the beautiful work of the Holy Spirit. When you read the Bible and it just, it gets into your spirit. Just when you're talking about the tarot cards and still being out there, we were reminded about the end part of Joseph where he, yes. he says to his brothers, you had one plan for my life, but God had another plan. And he's, he's going to use all of these things for good. So it's, again, like you said, it's not your job to save people. It's not your job mm -hmm. to take those things out of people's hands if they're buying them. God's going to use them. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do. I see that fruit. I really do. I, yeah. I get, I get uh, occasional apology letters from people who say that they were bad mouthing me um, when yeah. they first heard me con that I converted, and they apologize for that because now Jesus has called them out of the new age. And I have yeah. to admit that those those letters really tickle me because it shows that you know it's not it's not people who express the hatred; it's the demons yeah. who are running the new age yeah. and the demons hate jesus the demons hate the bible and the demons influence people to hate jesus and hate the bible and the new agers would say well i don't hate jesus i follow jesus like i used to think but it's a false spirit it's yeah. it's a demon pretending to be jesus and how do you know by comparing everything to what the bible says the the false jesus says i you can do whatever you want to do as long as you're happy and positive and don't hurt anyone and that's not what Jesus said in the Bible. Jesus, no. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. He's calling us to toe the line, not be free for all hedonists. Yes, that's so true. One lady that I um, interviewed, she had a real problem with the word Jesus, just the name Jesus. So yeah. she was trying to do energy work on the name Jesus, which is hilarious. And she finally sort of broke down and, and, that truth, that beautiful truth of who he really is was revealed. But yeah, question why, why wouldn't you read the Bible? Why, why would you be against in such a loving and light community? Why would you be against your conversion? It's, it's, it is crazy. How has your thinking changed since coming to God? Well, um, I'm not thinking about myself so much. <laughs> I used to be, you know, really <laughs> yeah. obsessed with what did you think about me? Like be, one of the examples is before when I would give donations, I would make sure you knew about it. There'd be pictures of my donation, <laughs> stories about it all over social media, just congratulating myself on being such a generous, good person. <laughs> now I volunteer and donate, but you're not going to hear about it yeah. because Jesus told us that you either get your rewards for your good work here or there, and yeah. don't let the right hand know what the left hand's doing when you do good works. It's funny, isn't it? I, I've had that similar experience as, as well with fasting. I just decided to tell uh, everyone I'm fasting. And then, and then I read the Pharisees were doing that. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brilliant. This is the real spiritual life we were always searching for. And like you said, it's not for the faint hearted. I mean, well, Jesus' salvation is open for everyone. Everyone needs him. That brings me to my last question. What has changed in your heart? Yeah, I, I think I just, um, I can feel now. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that when we're saved, God takes out our old stony heart that doesn't feel. It's very selfish heart. It's deceived, deceived heart and gives us a heart of flesh that can feel. So um, I cry much more easily now. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, the compassion for people who are suffering and my desire to pray for them and help them as God guides me is just completely, it's here now. I didn't have that before. I mean, I was always trying to help people. You know, I was always donating and volunteering before, but now I feel for people on just this deeper level. And, and I take things to prayer. Like I'm, I, before I was in charge, like I thought that like the new age teaches your thing, your thoughts create your reality. So I would just try to manifest the desired outcome. And now I'm submissive to God's will. And one of the things I'm working on right now with my son who doesn't speak with me, who shunned me, is learning to trust God on that because I've done everything possible to get contact with my son and uh, try to mend that relationship and make, make amends. But he's just closed right now. He's a new ager and his wife's a new ager. And so I'm learning to trust through suffering just like someone who has a debilitating illness has to learn to trust. God will sometimes heal a situation like that when you pray, but if he doesn't, that's because it's his will and he's got a deeper lesson for us. So it's a consequence of sin. I wish I could go back in time and have been a Christian family since the beginning and married a godly man who was Christian and we you know, had godly upbringing of our kids, but it, I raised my kids a new age and now I'm suffering the consequences of that and learning to trust that God is hearing my prayers for my sons and uh, leaning on him for that, trusting his timing. Yeah, relying on, on him. It's a whole new way of living, relinquishing control and, and doing old ways, that old thinking, taking off the old man and relying, submitting to God's way and his will, knowing the difference and knowing that we can. And what a Amen, beautiful. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's so different. You know, in the new age, yeah. I was always using cards to predict and control the future. I was actually addicted to cards and, and, and people around me were using them. And, and so we, were, we thought we were in control of the future and it, we're not. We never were. It's all God. It's yeah. his will. Yes, 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 yes. And as an ex-control freak, it's hard to submit to, to God, but he is the only one. He's the only one you can trust. Amen. Excellent. Doreen, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. It's just wonderful to just watch you and just relate and just go, yeah, let's see all those experiences and we're vocal about them and, and say, you know, God showed me this or showed me that in my life. I can see it's reflected in his word as well. So Amen. Thank Amen, you Heather, so much. Thank you, Heather. God bless you. God bless. Thank you for listening. I'll leave you with one question to contemplate. Ask yourself, is it going to be my way or Yahweh? If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If not, a thumbs down. Please feel free to review it, leave a comment or feedback. Any questions, you can come find me at The Law of Distraction on Instagram. And from there, you'll be able to access my site and courses and other downloadable material. Till next time, God bless.